All right, well, our next guest is the ACT Deputy Leader, Brooke Van Velden, uh, who originally we had to come on and talk about the Nationals' childcare rebate policy, which seemed to be the cornerstone of a rather uninspiring State of the Nation speech delivered, looked like, to an, uh, an Oxenagerian uh, Rotary Club by uh, Chris Luxon on Sunday. But, of course, since then, of course, too, we've had the Prime Minister come out and talk about this transport plan, and I can't figure out whether he's going to build more roads or get people out of cars and into buses and onto public transport. So I guess she's good enough to cover all those things. Uh, Brooke Van, Van Velden joins us now. How are you, Brooke? Welcome to the platform. Good morning. How are you, Sean? Great, thanks. Um, so a bit of policy, you know. People always say it's always the boring part of an election year. People bring out policies. Um Oh, I love I love policy debate. Yeah, I do. You act people do. All right, let's have a look first at this um, clearly uh, pitch to the middle class um, working New Zealander. The childcare rebate or subsidy or payment, I guess, it's basically the purchase of childcare services by the government um, that National have announced. Do we act broadly agree with that policy or not? Oh, look, uh, the, the way I see it is National should be congratulated for acknowledging that there's a cost of living crisis for people. And I think that's what they're doing here. You know, people who have children are finding it really hard to make ends meet at the end of each week. But the difficulty I have with this policy um, is it's essentially what Labor could have put out themselves. And once you start going down that route, it just becomes a bidding war uh, between National and Labor about who can spend more. Uh, and that means that at the end of the day, uh, Labor wins, the taxpayers lose, and it's only ACT here holding the fort for rational economic policy. Um, and I think what would be better rather than another childcare subsidy um, is giving a tax cut to every earner. And that means with ACT tax policy, uh, taking that 30% tax rate down to 17.5%, any sole parent who would be on $70,000 would be $2,300 better off. Now, that means that that person could choose uh, to spend their money on a childcare subsidy, but alternatively, they could also spend it on groceries or petrol or something else that they think is good for their family. Yeah. Uh, so, what I want to see is more choice uh, with tax cuts, rather than one subsidised childcare policy. Yeah. Um, Liberal media clearly got the heads up on the national policy, and Michelle Duff, in one of the Sunday papers, tried to do a big takedown piece on the early childhood education sector and say they were making money and that clearly, therefore, national were giving money to their mates or something. It was, it was slightly weird, the story. Um, do you think that is the case or not? that criticism is valid. Oh, look, there are childcare facilities uh, that work in New Zealand who are for profit, but I think we've got to get away from this idea that being for profit is somehow a dirty thing uh, and that people who run organisations shouldn't be trying to be efficient uh, and do better with the money that they have. I think that's, that's a good thing that people uh, who run businesses want to be involved in childcare. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, but what I think is uh, a difficult is potentially over the past few years, we've had uh, childcare subsidised for 20 hours a week. Um, that's been funded by the government uh, for anybody. Uh, but at the same time, we've also seen the costs for childcare facilities go up. You've got regulatory overreach, more burden, but also we've seen pay parity come through. Uh, so childcare facilities are paying their staff more uh, than what they used to be, but they're still trying to make all their ends meet. So no, I don't think it's bad that people are trying to make a profit because I think that makes people try to be more efficient with the, with the resources that they have. Yeah, and the truth is too, the government has walked away from early childhood, uh, childhood care and I was looking and thinking about it. If it works for early childhood, why don't we apply the same philosophy to primary and secondary school education? And that is, let the private sector provide the services and provide a subsidy through the government. Because at the moment, everything above child, early childhood is largely state run. And I imagine we could get huge efficiencies if Labor just extended this model throughout our education system? 
Well, I think our education system does need massive reform. You know, you have schools who are being propped up um, under our current system who are failing children, quite frankly, uh, and other schools that are doing really, really awesome jobs. You know, just on Monday uh, last week, I went to go and visit Vanguard Military School, which is one of the original charter schools that ACT introduced. Uh, they're doing a fantastic job taking really, uh, you know, kids who'd never been given another chance, giving them a chance with teachers wrapped around them that will support them. Uh, but they need more help under the charter school model. Yeah. They need that bulk funding uh, so that they can make efficiencies where they see fit, uh, but have the ability to teachers and pay them more if they're a really deserving teacher uh, and make a model that works for that kid rather than being uh, dictated to by bureaucrats in Wellington telling them exactly how to run their school. All right. Um, so we have that policy, the cornerstone of the rather boring, I have to say, State of the Nation speech um, from Luxon. And then yesterday, uh, Chippy comes out at his post-cabinet presser. And look, I'm still trying to get a handle in my own head as I I'm reading different things from his mates in the, in the legacy media. Is this about building more infrastructure and roads or getting people on buses? Oh, look, I think there's there's confusion even within the government about what they're trying to do. You know, Michael Wood going out there and saying that um, he wants to try and shift people away from cars uh, and use the cyclone as, as a reason uh, to get people into buses and maintain fewer roads, I think is, is crazy. Um, what we've seen from the cyclone is the need for more road improvements, for more uh, maintenance of our basic infrastructure. That's what we should be focused on. Uh, but the government, uh, with its Zero Carbon Act uh, and its emission reduction plan, is trying to shift people away from uh, all of the basic modes of transport that they need to live their lives. Uh, and its central planning of the scale for the reason why ACT was the only party to oppose all of these plans in Parliament when they came through. Because at the moment, we've now got government ministers subsidising people to use Teslas uh, over ute owners, but at the same time then saying nobody should be on the road at all and will remove even car parks for the Teslas owners. Um, so what are they actually trying to do here? I think they're trying to uh, change uh, New Zealanders' minds and try and force people into mode transport shift without recognising that New Zealanders have lives that they need to live. They need to be able to pick up their kid from hockey uh, drive to work, drive to the supermarket, uh, potentially drop someone off at the doctor all in one day, rather than trying to figure out how on earth the bus or, or transport system is working. Yeah. Um, Brooke, are you going to the theatre on Thursday night? Are you, an art, are you a culture vulture? Are you going to the Auckland Arts Festival? I absolutely love uh, the arts and going to, to festivals and the theatre. But I don't have any plans to go on Thursday night uh, to that one. Uh, but you'll you'll see me around um, a lot of the different theatres around Auckland. All right. OK. Look, we've talked to, to David about this before, your glorious leader. Um, he said he'd asked some questions in Parliament. We've still got not a dicky bird out of the Human Rights Commission. Are you guys going to push it this week? Mm -hmm. There's only two days to go. Yeah, look, there, there, we need to cut back on some of this this funding that the government is doing. Uh, I think this this racist poem uh, that the government is is funding does need to be cut. I think it's unacceptable, and I think the Human Rights Commission should look into it. Um, I also think uh, Ming should be clear about what he believes is racism in New Zealand. Uh, at the moment, it seems it's a bit up in the air. Uh, but certainly, in my opinion, somebody going out there saying that white people, because they're inherently white um, and, and are de deserving of violence, should be stabbed, is outrageous and it should never happen in this country. I think that's unacceptable language. Brooke, I thank you very much indeed for your, your time this morning. Um, we will talk again soon. That is Brooke Van Velden, the Deputy Leader of the ACT Party. Yeah, there is policy. We'll see up the wazoo is coming, as it would seem to me, Labour and National hunt for the centre ground. Uh, absolutely hunt for the centre ground. And I cannot clearly get what the transport policy is uh, from Labour yet. Um, but what uh, Chris Hipkins isn't talking about is being kinder.
Uh, he's far more nuts and bolts.